Hey there, Math126 fans. Uh, part two of this exam one review, I'm going to talk about lines and planes. This is uh, uh, one of the most important topics of the entire course. It's something that we usually spend a couple days in lecture on, so there's no way I'm going to cover it in a few minute video, but I just want to hit a couple topics that students often get confused on. You know, your goal, which you've discovered, is that if some, if a question says, find a line, then you're searching for two things. And I always kind of draw, I tell students to just draw the same picture or think about the same picture which is you need some point that's on the line and some vector that's parallel to the line. And the freedom is what students don't like, but the truth is there's an infinite number of ways to describe that line with a parametric equation. You just need some starting point, which we're gonna think as the place where you step onto the line at time zero. And then you need something that tells you how the coordinates change as you walk. So one second later, how much do you go up? That's it. You're looking for a point and a direction. Strategically, there's kind of two things this is from my notes. Either the information is given, and that's sometimes the hardest situation for students is interpreting what the question says, or we find two points. If you can find two points, then you can find the vector quickly by subtraction. Okay, so that's one. Two, if a question says find the equation of the plane, then surprisingly, you're looking also just for two things. And there's a longer discussion about why this is, and I can't do that in this video. So we're just gonna talk about this. We need a point and what we call a normal. Normal vector is perpendicular. It turns out that vector describes things a lot better than slope does. In fact, slope doesn't even make sense. Okay, if we can find that, then we get the following fact that this is perpendicular to any two points. So there's kind of a, I guess I can say the very quick version of why this is true. If you have any other point on here, x, y, z, and you do this little subtraction, here's the quick explanation. These two vectors, the vector from some given point to some other point that's on there, x, y, z, should be perpendicular. And if two vectors are perpendicular, that's zero. That's where it comes from. So then you get a x minus x zero plus b y minus y zero plus c z minus z zero equals zero. So just like with most things in math, you need to know what is given and what you want. But here we know what we want. We want a point and a direction vector, and we want a point and a normal vector. Strategically for planes, sometimes the information is given, and sometimes you need to find two vectors on the plane so you can take their cross product. Often we do that with three points. Okay, a few general things before we look at a few problems. Happy situations. In recent years, I realized I need to say this. So if you have two lines that are parallel, that means that you can use the same direction vector. So that would be a situation where the info is given. Meaning, if somebody says this line is parallel to this other line, then they basically have already told you what you a, a vector you can use there. If they tell you that two planes are parallel, so you have a plane and a plane, and they're parallel, vector, vector, you can use the same vector here and here. Now both those vectors are perpendicular planes, but that doesn't matter. So that's an example where the information is given. What I find students do is they just think, okay, plane do a cross product. No, you'd only do a cross product if you have to. Okay, line and plane orthogonal. You have a line, it's perpendicular. We love that situation because this vector, the normal vector, is perpendicular to the plane, and the direction vector is also perpendicular to the plane, so you can use the same vectors. Those three situations are situations where if you see those words, you're happy. So two lines parallel, two planes parallel, or a line and a plane that are perpendicular because you can use the same vectors. Those are happy situations because it means it's going to be a really short problem. Less happy situations would be the rest. <laughs> what if you have two lines that aren't parallel? Well, then you got some work to do. What if you have, and a common one is a plane and another plane, and they are perpendicular to each other? That's surprisingly not that helpful. You can look around the room you're in right now, and you're going to see, like, in the corner, or, or to take a wall. Where that wall meets the other walls, they're perpendicular. Where that wall meets the ceiling, they're perpendicular. Where that wall meets the floor, it's perpendicular. So there's a lot of planes that are perpendicular to a given plane, so it's less helpful. 
But there is one thing you can say, which is that the normal vector for this plane is parallel to this plane, which gives you one of these vectors. So pretty much the only thing you get by when you have two planes that are perpendicular is a vector. Same thing as if you saw a line and a plane that were parallel. The only thing you really get is that this direction vector is parallel and you can use it as one of those vectors. So typically, if it's not one of your happy situations, then you just get one vector to find your plane. Now, the word orthogonal means perpendicular. The word contains or is on does not mean perpendicular. So that's a common misread I see students. You'll have a plane and you'll have a line that's on the plane. That's what this is talking about. That is very different than perpendicular to the plane. And if you misread that, you're, you're not doing the right problem. So if a line contains a point, it means it's on it. All the points are on there. All right, so now let's look at just a few scenarios because I can't go through it all. I do want to say one thing, that if you need practice with this, then you should do this review sheet. I made this years ago. I think it's darn good. Um, and it hits almost every scenario. It does four examples with lines and does all the main scenarios. It does five examples with planes. It hits all the main scenarios. It talks about intersections um, of two planes, two lines, all those things that are so important. Actually, the intersection of two lines is up, two planes is up here. So do that. I have solutions where I step through how to do it. Recently, students said, could I make a video? So I made this. This was during the pandemic, unfortunately, so it's not as clean as my recent videos, but you can see me go through it. If you went through that, you would be a whiz at lines and planes, and then if you did um, the homework, you'd be good to go. Okay. So anyways, let's look at a few problems. And for any given problem, and I just went through and started grabbing them from old exams. Find the equation of the plane that's orthogonal to this other plane and contains these two points. So here's how I think through it. Find the equation of a plane. I don't even read on past there. I draw a plane. I always draw the same plane. Let me move these out of the way because it's bothering me. And the next thing I go is what do I want? And this is how I approach all math questions. In this case, I want a normal and a point, okay? And the other thing I tell students to do is at the bottom of the page, you could write X minus, fight for every point you can get. I love it when students do stuff like this because I can see they're on the right track. Okay, what does it say? It's orthogonal to this other plane. So now we're gonna think about the given information. Here's this other plane. It's orthogonal. Now you know that's one of our unhappy situations. But there is something I can extract from this. There's a vector. There's 4, 0, negative 1. Unfortunately, that vector doesn't point in any of the directions I really want. So boo. All we can really say from there is 4, 0, negative 1 is parallel to the desired plane. And so in my head, like I was telling you a moment ago, I'm thinking I have one of these vectors. And so I'm, I'm now thinking I'm going to have to do a cross product at some point, but I already have one vector, which is good. What else did they give me? They gave me two points on the plane, P and Q. And you can see how just drawing this picture, even though it's not like part of my solution, is just helping me think. But now I have a point. I can put either one of the points here. So how about I put 3, 2, 3. You could also use the other one. It doesn't matter. In fact, if you plug either one in and expand, you get the exact same thing. So at this point, I now know what I need to do. I need one other vector that's parallel to my plane. So how about PQ? So it's going to be 4. That's going to be 1. 5 minus 2, that's going to be 3. This is negative 2. And I'm almost done. As soon as I have done this cross product, 4, 0, negative 1, 1, 3, negative 2. It's going to go here. And we should know we get the cross product right. So you can see this is more about plan of attack. And once you have the plan of attack, these questions become much easier. Okay, um, let's do it again. Here's another one. And again, I just randomly grabbed ones from my old exams or other instructors' old exams. I don't even know where I got these. Consider the plane that passes through this point. Okay, I'm trying to find a plane. 
I need a point and a normal. That's what I want. What am I given? It passes through the point 442. Oh, I'm too excited. I did not write this down yet. Do to do, do. You don't have to say do to do. You might get in trouble if you're talking during the test. Four, four, two. And now I need a normal. Let's see what else. It contains the line. There's that darn word. Contains does not mean perpendicular. It means this line like is on here. Well, can you tell me about this line? Well, it goes to the point zero, three, four. I just plugged in zero. And it goes in the direction of this, which is five, one, negative one. You can see we're drawing this that plane. Help me a little bit. So one thing I know is that five, one, negative one is one vector that's parallel to this plane. And that's great because I'm get, I'm now I'm searching for two vectors parallel to the plane so I can do their cross product. Okay, so we're down to this part where we're stuck. We need another, ve another vector on the plane. Can I do it? Well, it sure would be nice if I had another point. I do. That's it. So let's call this P, let's call this Q, and this ends up being very similar to the last problem, PQ is 4, 1, negative 2. And if I was doing a test, I would just do the cross product right there. When you're done, those are your three numbers. Success. Let's keep going. Find the equation of the plane that contains these two points and is orthogonal to this other plane. Oh, that's just like the first question. Boring. <laughs> Where are the rest of the questions? I thought I grabbed a few more. Um, that's the the game we're playing. So there are a few special situations like the intersection of two planes. I like to try to find two points, um, the intersection of two lines, but I think I'm going to send you to my review because I do it in more detail here. You know, visually, this is what we're doing when we're finding a plane. This is from my lecture notes. We're finding this normal vector that's perpendicular. We're doing a cross product. Now that cross product can be really long or really short. It depends on the two vectors we use, but it's still going to be perpendicular. Um, when we do the intersection of a line and plane, we're doing this. When we do the intersection of two planes, I just like to find two points. And once I find two points, I'm done because I can use two points to find the plane. And when we're doing the intersection of two lines, we do need to use a different parameter because you may be at that intersection at different times. I mean, the person walking on the red line, the person walking on the blue line, they don't necessarily get there at the same time. And so the most important thing there is if one of the things uses a T, have the other one use a U um, and then solve and combine. So watch my session here. Go through these if you need more practice. I think I'll stop.